Sometimes I design something, I build it, and then the more I use it, the more I realize I really didn't think this through. This belt grinder table holder is one of those things. So the concept is good, just the execution was kind of poor. It's mainly one big flaw. The holder is designed to hold tables that have a vertical inch and a half post on them. This makes the tables really easy to build and it also makes them indexable. So you can see I just turned it 90 degrees and the table holder can slide in and out on this horizontal bar. But probably the most important feature of this is for when the grinder is in the horizontal mode. In order to evenly wear out the entire surface of the belt, you need to be able to move the table vertically. And because of this vertical post design, you can move the table straight up and down without changing its angle or its horizontal position. As far as I know, this has never been done before. So, what's wrong with this design? Well, here's a 45 degree table. Works great, right? But now, what if I try to lower it all the way down? On this table, I tried to put this little bit of structure on here to give it more strength. That's bottoming out on the top of the tube here. So the solution, I'm going to build an entire new table holder where this tube sits lower, about an inch and a half lower. That'll give me plenty of room to put whatever sort of structure underneath here I want on any angle of table. And I'll also be able to build tilting tables because I can put a hinge in here. There will be enough room for that. Now there are a couple other smaller issues with this design that I'm going to fix while I'm working on it anyway. So this is bolted on right here because that allows me to adjust the angle of this to make sure that the table is sitting flat. But I've always been a little bit scared that these are going to slip. They never have. It's never been a problem. But I find myself being kind of careful with this thing because of being scared of that. And considering how strong this is, I really shouldn't have to be careful with it. I'm going to start the build by making the vertical tube that holds the table. The bandsaw doesn't leave very clean cuts, so I clean them up and square them with the belt grinder. You'll notice the shape of this tube is a little bit different. It doesn't come quite to a complete point at the top. I spent enough more time on the design this time that I figured out that would work just as well. Before I weld this together, I need to drill and tap four holes in this left side. Those and the bolts that go in them will take the place of these bolts and serve as the adjustment. You'll see what I mean by that later. With the four holes all tapped, it's ready to be welded together now. So I'm just clamping all the pieces around a piece of inch and a half square bar to establish the correct inside dimensions. And I'm using some utility knife blades as shims that'll give it about 30 thousandths of clearance. I just used one blade to give it some clearance side to side and one blade to give it some clearance front to back. Now I start out by just putting a few tack welds on it, about every two inches. The welding causes the tube to shrink down onto the bar, so it takes some force to knock it off. This is why I only tack weld it while it's on the bar. If I welded it solid, it would just get that much more stuck. Here I'm finishing it by welding everything solid, and you'll notice I'm only welding about an inch at a time, and then I'm moving to a different corner. That's so that I don't get a big buildup of heat in one place, because that can cause the tube to warp. I've just cleaned this up a bit and squared the ends, and now I need to make the structure that's going to connect it up to this inch and a half bar. On the original table holder, this structure was welded onto the holder, and then it was bolted onto the bar. This one's going to be the other way around. It's going to be welded onto the bar, and then bolted onto the table. So here I'm making the left and right sides of the structure to connect that. After rough cutting the parts, I use the belt grinder to grind them square and smooth. And sometimes the height of the table needs to be adjusted even when the grinder is in the vertical orientation. Otherwise, since your work always lands at the same place on the platen, it tends to wear a groove into the platen surface there. 
Now I have to take this old table holder apart because I want to reuse the bar. As you can see, I had those bolts really tight to make sure they didn't slip. And here's how those sides get mounted onto the bar. You can see I need to cut the end of the bar off at a bit of an angle to match. And that's my workout for the day. I'm gonna go ahead and weld these on now. But before I do that, I need to chamfer these edges. The two chamfers will come together to form a V between the two parts, and I'll fill that with weld. So here you kind of get your first idea of how this all goes together. This tube is going to mount right here, and then this is all going to get closed in. So there will be a 45 degree piece across the front like so, and then this will all be closed top and bottom to create a tube. That will help resist torque. Then I started adding in the pieces to close in the rest of the tube, and each of these pieces will just custom cut to fit. I got all the pieces tacked in place so that nothing could warp when I welded it solid, but I left the back one out so that I could reach inside and weld the sides onto the bar. And once I was done accessing the inside, I could go ahead and install the back piece. Now there's one more piece that I need to make. Before I can mount this table holder tube onto the side of here, I need somewhere for the bolts to go. So. This plate is going to get welded onto here and have four drilled holes through it for this to bolt onto. These are 7 16 holes, so they should have a little bit of wiggle room on the 3 8 bolts that I'm going to use. And here I'm rounding over the corners using my radius jig. This eighth inch shim is needed to get the table holder tube to be in the center of the belt when this is installed in the grinder. So this is all done now, it's ready to paint, but this piece is not quite done yet. I still need to put a threaded hole in the corner that I can use to lock the bar in place. I think I'm going to do this new one the same way as I did the old one, which was to file a flat spot on a 45 degree angle, then drill a hole, and then weld a nut on. You have to be a bit careful drilling this hole in the corner because once you get through the corner it becomes an intermittent cut and that can tend to grab. You can hear it here. It looks like my drill bit wandered a little bit that way, but that's fine because it's an oversized hole so I can just make sure the nut is centered on the flat spot. I just got an idea. Let's see if this works. By putting a bolt inside, I can hold the nut in place, and it also fills in the inside of the nut so no spatter can get in there. This worked great, and it actually helped hold the nut centered too. Here I'm just doing a test fit to make sure that everything works as designed and nothing needs modification before I take it apart and paint it. And you should be able to see here how these four bolts are going to hold it much more rigidly than the two bolts that held it onto the bar before. I would call that a success, so it's ready for paint. I masked off the inch and a half bar, and I masked the inside of the table holder tube and I stuck some rolled up paper towel in the tapped holes. To check and be sure that the table holder was parallel to the platen, I used a piece of half inch thick aluminum and just moved that up and down the platen using it sort of like a feeler gauge. Right here, this is the best I ever got it. I think apparently the bar or the platen must be slightly warped because it's loose at the bottom and loose at the top, but it's as close as it can be. 
and then I can tighten the four bolts to lock that in place. Here you get a nice side-by-side -side look at the two. You can see from the front just how much lower the new one is. And from the side. You'll also notice that there's a lot more room beside the tube, right in this area. That gives me a lot more room to have structure under the table to help support it. I guess there's not really all that much new or exciting about the new table holder. It's just kind of one of those things that had to be done. I'm hoping to make another video soon about making different tables for this, including a tilting table. I finally have a design for that. And this was just kind of needed in order to make that possible. I do have plans available for this on my website for free. And I've realized that it's a pretty important part of the grinder. So I'm actually gonna start including these plans with the belt grinder. So if you buy the plans for the belt grinder, you'll get plans for the belt grinder, for the platen attachment, and for the table holder. And there's links to all of that stuff in the description.